Okay. After this video, putting these back on the shelf. How am I holding all my top 10 favorite books right now? I don't know. But please, don't worry. You don't need to send help because I've already read these and oh, they're gonna crush me. It's a good thing they're my favorites, but they're my precious favorites. I don't want anything to, you know, happen to them because <clears throat> there's that fun fact. Let's get into it, shall we? Oh, well, hello. That didn't work out well. <laughs> anyway, if you haven't already can tell by this title, we are going to be talking about my top 10 favorite books ever because I just, I don't gush about these enough. I do maybe one or two of them, but I feel like they need more loving, you know? So, without further ado, let's just go ahead and talk about my top 10 books that I really enjoyed reading over the years and some are new favorites so we're gonna work our way from 10 all the way up to the number one because that one I adore it and I'm rereading it currently and I don't want to give away which one I'm rereading at the moment until the very end of the video so if you want to know what that is please stick around because no one hardly ever talks about that book and it's an older one but it's a fun older one and I am uh, still obsessed with the series. I think I need to try to figure out how to put that on my favorite book shelf. We'll see if we can get it in there but since I'm rambling at this point we're just gonna go ahead and go with my books. Okay, starting at number 10, we have The Mortal Instruments by Cassandra Clare and the rest of the books were about to attack me. Stay. Good books. As I was saying, the number 10 book is The Mortal Instruments City of Bones by Cassandra Clare. I love this whole series. I like the very first one where, you know, it started it all with Clary and Jace. There's a lot of, I think, mixed reviews on this book. Either people love it and they're obsessed or they hate it and they can't stand Clary or Jace. But in my case, I like them both. Especially Jace. He's very witty. He's very sarcastic and I like sarcastic so that might be why I like this a lot. And then you got your side characters. You got Simon. You got Izzy who's one badass shadow hunter might I add. And then we got Alec who can shoot arrows and he kind of reminds me of Katniss when he's shooting his arrows. So like praise for Alec. And then you got your Mangus Bane who is your not normal high warlock and him and Alec. Ooh. If you read the series you know what the ooh was about and it's just all the right, it's all the feels for me. It's just, I love this series so much. Eventually I'm going to plan on getting a Mortal Instrument tattoo, I believe. I've been wanting it for a couple of years. I haven't gotten around to getting one yet, but I think soon. I don't know how soon, but soon. We'll just say soon. And we're going to move on because the rest of these books really want to attack me right now. And I'm not about that life. Okay, coming in at number nine is The Fifth Wave by Rick Yancey. This was, I think, my first science fiction novel that I've ever read about aliens coming to the planet and wiping them out by a virus. 
and then the next thing they took out was the lights, and then the next thing they took out was the whole town because of the virus that got everybody and wiped the world completely clean, and so it's like running around with aliens, and then you got these kids who are like trying to have to defend themselves and like stay away from like the aliens and like you have to be careful to who you trust and then some of the kids go into the army but they don't know exactly who's controlling the army we'll just leave it at that because i don't want to give too much away of the fifth wave but i remember absolutely loving the book i love our main character cassie who's trying to get her little brother back that got taken away from the army that got taken away from her by the army people and she's on her way to go and get him and he's just trying to stay alive until she comes and he knows that he that she is on her way to get him and he is not wrong at all and I'm just obsessed with the first two books the last one the last star didn't really care for the ending in that one cuz I was like no there's no way she is but apparently she was and I was like okay that no but overall the very first book I absolutely adore and to me it should have been just like maybe the first two books or even the standalone I think it might have would have been okay but it's still my favorite of course all right and then coming in at eight which I don't know why it's at eight but it is it's an old favorite book of mine from high school and that is blue is for nightmares by Lori Farah dollars now in this one we're following a boarding girl boarding girl that nah, a boarding school <laughs> with this girl named Stacy Brown she has these nightmares and in her nightmares are is a way of telling her where this person is going to end up if they're gonna get killed but it doesn't reveal who the killer is like you have to keep guessing is it that person who's possibly the killer but like at the end like when she wakes up from her nightmares it gives her like a hint of where the where she can find that person I know I'm repeating myself on that one but that is how it works and she is a witch and her grandma taught her Whitaka. so if you're into witches and if you're into Whitaka, I highly recommend this series like I said I've had this since high school and I've reread it I think last year in 2019 and I should get on to the second book because oh, I just miss the series so much and Stacy is my favorite character which is the main character of the book and she's just going through high school and drama and boys and magic and only her closest her best friends and her roommate know that she can do magic and it's just mwah. I love Blue is for Nightmare series so if you want to pick it up I would highly recommend it because it is an all-time favorite for me. Alright and then coming in at number seven this should be no surprise to anybody because it's a favorite or not a favorite here on booktube and that is Throne of Glass by Sarah J Mass. Now in this one we're following our character Selena who is a one of a heck of a badass assassin. I would read the Assassin's Blade before you jump into this one because it explains oh kind of how she's this badass assassin and then in this one she gets like thrown into the castle where the king is where she meets Prince Dorian and his bodyguard Kale. Oh, I love them. But I'm I'm team Kale. Don't come at me in the comments. But anyway, I just love their characters together and I especially love Selena slash Aelin. Oops, sorry. Anyway, <laughs> I loved how like in the Assassin's Blade she talked about like how she likes reading books and some of her interests that she likes well I think that the reading books and then like it's weird to explain why she's technically my 
favorite person. It's just, it's just her wittiness, her sm sarcasm. Again, with the sarcasm stuff, I think it it just clicks well sometimes with me. Not everything, but in books and in some shows, generally sarcasm I really like, and she's very snarky and she will take you down with a blow and she doesn't rely on a man to help necessarily in the beginning to what she's about to do and when people tell her no she turns around and she goes and does it anyway without a care in the world so that's probably another reason why Selena is my favorite character from Throne of Glass so we'll go with that and sorry about the little ramble there that's just what we have all right and then coming in at number six I love this series I started it in 2018 finally got to the second book last year loved that one a lot of course and that would be Strange the Dreamer by Lanny Taylor now this follows our character Lazlo Strange. He one day um, remembers their world called Weep, but their the name kind of changed, and he was one of the people who can't figure out why the name has changed. Then, like years later, he's working in the library, of course, and again he's also into books. I oh, love it. And he gets to go on a lifetime adventure to try to find out what happened to this world called Weep and why he is like a part of that thing. So he goes along with these group of people to learn more about this town and trying to figure out what happens. And, and he's just, he's everything. I don't know if I really need to say more about that so strange, but... He's just everything, and then the god spawn children in this. I love them, except for Minya. Minya, uh, she's different. We will say that she doesn't listen to reasoning, but I, rather than her, I like pretty much most of the people in Strange the Dreamer. So, we had to include that on this list. Alright, and then we're moving into number five, and I'm happy to be doing a reread of this one this year. And that is Red Rising by Pierce Brown. And if you haven't heard of Red Rising, why? Why not? If you don't know who Darrow or Severo is, <clears throat> we're okay. Oh, we're okay. Technically, in Red Rising, you got your different colors. Now, Daryl is a red, which is the low class of the line, and then you got your golds, who are, like, way up there and, like, can have powers, and they're, like, stronger, and they're, like, better, and they're, like, your army people. And then, it's just, it, it reminds me a lot of the Hunger Games as well because like there's parts of the book where they go into like an arena and they have to like fight to survive and see who lives and then there's the reaper I'm not telling you who exactly who the reaper is I think I almost did and if I did oops just leave that part out but anyway Darrow he is trying to go on his mission to save his wife who died um, message on and he wants to give the world hope and peace and that is what Darrow is trying his best to work on and getting his wife's speech out there and he goes through hell and back basically and so he is a low class red that gets turned into a gold and goes into this arena that I'm talking about where they like fight 
and how to survive. So that's like where the Hunger Games kind of kick in. And it is a sci-fi book. So if you're into that and the Hunger Games, I think you'll definitely like Red Rising by Pierce Brown. It's just, oh, I'm obsessed. I still need to finish Iron Gold and then get on into Dark Age, but I'm going to be doing that this year. So there's definitely this. So please, please pick it up because you need to know who the Reaper is and you need to know how witty and how sarcastically Severo is and the Hollowers. I, just, I love everything about Red Rising. Alright, moving into number four, of course, another assassin book, which is Never Night by J. Kristoff. First off, Mia. She is a... Oh, what do we call her? I forget the name what we're supposed to call her. I know she's an assassin, but she can also walk through shadows, and she has the shadow cat named Mr. Kindly. Mr. Kindly is, again, snarky, sarcastic, and so is Mia, and she's trying to get a hold of one of these uh, famous guys who did her family wrong and she's out for revenge and if you really want to know more about Nevernight there's a trailer there's a t web series about Nevernight it's just everything and so is Mia Corfear and Mr. Kindly and oh she's dark and that's what she is I knew it would come to me eventually but yes, she is definitely dark in where she can walk in between shadows with Mr. Kindly's help. And she also has no fear because he drinks her fear. So uh, there is that. And she's on this way to this red church to where she is trained to be a better assassin so she can go after the guy who did her family wrong. And that, my friends, is Nevernight's. And if that sounds up right up your alley, I highly recommend checking it out. And the web series. The web series is definitely good. Alright, and then coming in at number three is The Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. Now, Six Dangerous Outcasts, One Impossible Heast. These group of people are put together in this Grisho world. They are trying to go to the ice court to take someone that has been put away that can help with an experiment. But the group of people that are going in after this kid is a group of thugs, a group of thieves, and one of them has powers because she is a Grisha and in the Grisha world there are certain people who have powers and then there's like us the, hu the humans in this world that don't have powers but there's armies of assassins and spies and it's just I love Kaz Brecker he's one of the main people who tries to get onto this job who wants to go to the ice court and he finds this group of five people who will help him break in, sneak in, and get this kid out without a scratch. Now is that necessarily possible to happen in this world? Well, I guess you're gonna have to read Six of Crows to find out because this isn't a wrap up and I'm not telling you exactly what happens to Six of Crows, just know if you're looking for an adventure and if you're looking for a little bit of romance and a group of people who kind of bicker because they're not really close friends but they have to get along together to do the job that they're meant to set out for, then pick up Six of Crows because why else? Alright, and then we're moving down to number two, which I keep bringing up, then even though I haven't got around to it, saying about the book yet, I mean, which is The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins. Now, 
this book has been around, and the movies have been around for a little bit, but briefly, we're following Katniss Everdeen, who takes her sister's place in the Hunger Games raping arena. She took over for her sister so her little sister didn't have to go into the Hunger Games and fight until death. And there's a lot of victors from each district and there's two from your own district and like I said you have to fight until death and when you win you technically aren't supposed to go back into the Hunger Games again. You get to live alone and in peace and have this money and get treated highly because you won the Hunger Games. But overall, Katniss Everdeen goes through a lot. And she's not the best at making friends, but she is good with her bow and arrow because she hunts and so ways to survive, trust your gut instincts, and also, be careful who you can trust in the games, and try to keep yourself alive. Want to know more? If you haven't checked out the Hunger Games, please do. Alright, and then my number one book coming in is Nightshade by Andrea Creamer. I am rereading this, and I'm super happy. It's kind of like Twilight, but only, except for it doesn't have vampires, it's got werewolves. And uh, when they're not in a werewolf form, they're in a, they're human form. And we're following this girl named Kala, who is trying to keep her pack together, and she's the alpha wolf, and she has to be getting along with another wolf pack, which has a male alpha wolf, alpha in that wolf pack, and pretty soon their two packs are gonna have to join together because the alpha from that pack and her are supposed to get married. But in the very beginning of this book, she runs into a kid on a mountain who she really wasn't technically supposed to save, but she saves him, thinking that she wouldn't see him again after that. But boy, was she wrong, wrong, and wrong. Because the next day at school, she sees the boy that she saved up on the mountains. And she basically has to beg him to not tell anybody that she saved his life from a grizzly bear. Because she was in wolf form that changed into a human form to save his life. And in her world, doing that is considered wrong, which is kinda stupid, but rather than that, like I said, we're following our main character, Kala. She is very snarky, so again, I like snarky characters apparently. What can you do? But overall, she's just, oh, like I said, sarcastic. I don't know if I said that, but I'm saying it now. Sarcastic, witty. She's a strong pack leader. She knows exactly what she wants, when for it to happen, and just she does what she can for a wolf. And I just. I love everything about Kala. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Alright, and there you have it. Those are my top 10 favorite books of all time. And if you guys are new here, go ahead and hit that subscription. Or that subscription. That subscribe right down there. Or whatever corner it's at. And hit the notification bell. So you can get emailed for, you know, whenever I decide I'm going to post. And I hope you guys are having a good day or night, and always get some unexpected reading in, because why not? And I will see you guys in another video, probably very soon. So, bye guys.